Hello everyone, happy Thursday, and welcome to the fourth and final episode of Bazaar Week, here at Quandries and Sundries. I hope you all enjoyed it, because it was fun to make these episodes, and it was a fun change as well for me. Let me know if you want me to do more of this going forward, and any thoughts on how you're enjoying Bazaar Week. So without further ado, let's get into the final episode with... Bizarre animal adaptions or evolutionary traits that grace our amazing planet. Let's start off with my favorite, the eye eye. A nocturnal animal from the lemur family, which resides in Madagascar, and has evolved with bizarre and wondrous evolutionary adaptions that make it a perfect animal in my opinion, but also sadly a target of being demonized by local folklore, putting it as an endangered animal. They are not large creatures. They can grow at max to about 3 feet or 90 centimeters and have a tail longer than the length of their own body, which is to be expected with a creature in the lemur family. But what are these evolutionary adaptions? Well, let's talk hands. The eye has developed a truly fascinating way to find prey. On each hand, they have six fingers. It uses its thinner third finger to tap on logs and branches, using echolocation to hear for lava and other bugs crawling around, while its giant and extremely long fourth finger is used to dig using its hooked nail to drag insects out, and its sixth finger is used for the same purpose as its tail, to help them grip while climbing, almost like a second thumb. I warn you that if you look up what their hands look like, it will scare you because it looks like a giant mutated spider from some alien movie. But I find it fascinating how it evolved in such a way to perfectly hunt for its food. Next, let's talk about its ears, which are beautifully constructed. Each ear has dozens of small ridges that serve the purpose of giving them superhuman hearing being able to hear the sounds of their tapping, giving off vibrations of insects in the logs and trees. These rigid ears are only found in a few animals on this planet, which, which makes them special. Now to the sad part. They are extremely endangered, and not for poaching or as trophies, but because of folklore and superstition. Before we discovered Madagascar, these nocturnal creatures that upon first glance looked like little gremlins were thought to be bad luck by the local tribes, the local Melanese, and were met, meant to be killed on sight. In a way I understand, coming across these bizarre creatures in the middle of the night and having no knowledge of them would terrify even the bravest human being and result in superstitions of eye eyes being demons and bad spirits, and those stories would be carried down for dead dozens of generations. In truth, they won't harm you. They are not deadly. They are skittish and shy and stay in the canopy because they are scared of us. And don't worry, they don't contain any poison or e even supernatural powers. They are just adorable lemurs who are misunderstood. So don't judge a book by its cover. Now before we get back into your regularly scheduled content, if you're enjoying my content, and if you're listening on YouTube, I'd really appreciate if you give this video a like, a comment, and if you're new to my content, consider subscribing. And do not forget to hit that little bell icon so you can be notified whenever I post something new. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify or the audio platform of your choice, consider following. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Now let's get right into the final story. Finally, let's talk about frogs but not just any old frogs. Today we are talking about wood frogs, who primarily live in northern cold -er areas of the United States and in most of Canada, in some of the coldest places in the Americas. But how do they survive such freezing temperatures? Well, that's why we're we talking about them today. Even in areas where temperatures can reach negative 80 Fahrenheit or negative 62 Celsius, they have developed the extraordinary evolutionary adaption to be able to freeze themselves, stop their breathing, 
and then revive themselves without any damage to themselves. They literally enter a state of cryostasis. Now, how do they achieve such a feat? When they sense that the cold winters or a freeze is upon them, they produce a chemical compound known as urea in their body tissue. And they turn all their glycogen into glucose and produce 10 times the amount of gluco glucose our bodies produce on a daily basis to prevent ice from forming in their internal organs or in their veins. The best way to describe glycogen turning into glucose is that when you eat food, it is turned into a form of energy called glycogen, and then the body turns it into a type of sugar that your body needs to function called glucose. But in the wood, frog, urea, and glucose then combine into a chemical called cryptoprotectants, allowing the body to protect itself from freezing over and prevent cells from dying or shrinking. They're even able to unfreeze and refreeze themselves multiple times if need be by using at least seven types of amino acids to jumpstart their muscles and their organs at a moment's notice. And no matter how many times they freeze and unfreeze themselves, it causes no damage to them. In the frozen state, they do not breathe. They do not need food. Their whole body is motionless, and they are unable to be detected by predators. They might as well just be a rock. We still don't know why this evolutionary adaption came into being, but the theory is straightforward. To survive harsh temperatures and winters. What is interesting is how we maybe could apply this to the field of cryoscience in the future. Well, that is all I got for today. Before I go, I would like to thank you again for joining me for another episode. I would also love to ask for all your help in letting me know how I'm doing and how I can improve the show. After all, this is your show and I do it all for you. So have it over to my social medias or just comment below and let me know what you think. Thanks so much and do not forget to share this to anyone in your life who could use a scientific moment in your, theirs. I hope you all join me again when I return to the show Wednesday the 21st at Quandries and Sundries regularly scheduled time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great rest of your week and an amazing weekend. This is Van Masterson, signing off.